As I promised in my last video, let's turn my character into a real magic finder. But to do that I need to change almost all of my gear, so let's go shopping. Let's start with this amulet. 15% items quantity and almost 100% items rarity. Just what I need. For this amulet to work, I need a quiver like this with an additional arrow. And a new helmet. By base with enchantment, lightning arrow hits two additional enemies. That's funny. T2 items rarity, but I need a T1. Wow, pretty fast. And the final touch, Benchcraft. The perfect helmet for us. New armor. The best choice for magic find. And of course, Satima's touch. Another must-have piece of gear for us. Now I need elegant hubris with Kaspiro for more items rarity. Normally this jewel would be placed here. But this elegant hubris with two nodes with increased items rarity is expensive. At least 8 divine orbs and some copies even more than 20 divine orbs. Besides, it is hard to find them because there is a limited number of these items on the market and the demand for them is very high. You can of course use Jewel with one node with items rarity, but I don't think it's worth it. Besides, after placing Elegant Hubris in this slot, we lose access to mana and life leech. All in all, just problems. But I offer you a cheap alternative. Thanks to one of my viewers who gave me this idea. In my build, I will be placing Elegant Hubris right here. First of all, now we don't have to worry about mana and life leech. And secondly, a timeless jewel like this is cheap. One to two divine orbs at most. At least that's what it cost before my video came out. Most likely the price will increase because some of my viewers will want to buy it. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss these moments and be the first. Of course there is a small problem. In order to access large nodes with items rarity we need to spend a lot of skill points and it is very inefficient. But this is not a problem because with another unique jewel we solve this problem. I bought this impossible escape. And that's it. Problem solved, because now we can place skill points in this zone as we want. In the end, I paid less than two divine orbs for this combination. Which is pretty good. I need another unique jewel. Thread of hope with large radius. It will save us a lot of skill points. Anyway, a very useful purchase. It's taking up the inspired learning slot, but I'll move it here because our elegant hubris is in a different place and now we have extra skill points. And the last thing I need to do is fix my resistances and spell suppression. I'm buying a belt like this with useful implicit and some tattoos that will add lightning resistance and some spell suppression. Now that's what I need. And the final touch, more tattoos that give increased items rarity. We can afford it because we have a keystone, supreme ostentation, and small nodes with attributes we don't need anymore. Now we are ready. 81% increased item quantity and 471% increased item rarity with a flask. A real magic finder. Now let's see what it can do. But I want to warn you all that this build is weaker because we changed our survivability, damage, and speed to items quantity and rarity. So if you are a beginner, you will have a hard time playing on T16 maps. So if you are new to Magic Find, then get ready. It will be hard, and it will take you some time to get used to this build. My current bow is very bad, and if you have something better, it will really help. Because a bow with at least 1100 DPS makes this build much more enjoyable and comfortable. Also, if you have problems with T16 maps, you can always do T10 or T11 maps. I realize that all of you are aiming for high level red maps, but in the last league I earned for two headhunters on T11 Cemetery, so it's all in your hands. As for the maximum values for items quantity and rarity, they can be increased even more. For example add, support gem item rarity support and also petrified blood with divination distillate. This will further increase the amount of good items you can find, but honestly I don't recommend it. Because as I said earlier, we have problems with survivability and damage and additions like this make us even more fragile. Although if you are a very greedy person and a big fan of cast on death portal, then maybe this is exactly what you need. 
And so we come to a very interesting part of this video, namely buying an item that will solve absolutely all the problems of this build. And now I'm talking about the headhunter. But for that I need 150 divine orbs, so let's sell some stuff and try to get the right amount of currency. That's a good start. But I need more. Very good. Another poor and addicted soul. Honestly, I've never understood what people find in these stacked decks. And why do they buy them? Maybe I should try opening a couple hundred. See what it's like. Just one time, the thing's not gonna go bad, wouldn't it? First valuable card. Wow. Very good. There aren't many good cards. I knew it was a scam. Wow. What is it? Just what we need. You know what? I liked it. I made two divine orbs. Easiest money of my life. We have a new plan. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Remember, gambling is addictive. Be responsible. I still don't have enough currency to buy a headhunter, and I need some kind of big gift, because even my brother's gift isn't enough. Wow. What is this Divine Orb's altar? A gift from Chris. That's it. Oh my god. That sounds so good. 28 Divine Orbs from one map. That's pretty good. Thanks Chris, now I've got enough currency. Finally. The moment of truth. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to run a couple maps with my new and cool upgrade. Oh yes. The difference is felt immediately and this unique belt solved all our problems and the build became 100 times better and it's a pleasure to play on it. Therefore, the price for Headhunter fully justifies itself. And here is the first valuable loot. I love gifts from my brother. Now I will definitely have no problem buying upgrades. Let's buy a couple of new items. Nothing special, just a little quality of life improvements. And one big cluster. That's it. Whoops. Forgot. A little crafting. Not bad. And lastly, some new support gems. Perfect. As for my current atlas, it looks like this and basically it hasn't changed much. I just changed the expedition to Breach and Abyss. And it's a pretty standard atlas for magic find. As for the scarabs and compasses I use, they are Gilded Reliquary, Gilded Ambush, Polished Legion, and Gilded Divination. Area contains an additional Legion encounter. Your maps contain a Mirror of Delirium. Your maps contain Hunted Traitors. Your maps contain an additional Abyss. And Beyond Craft on the map device. Alternatively, you can use cheaper Scarabs and less Compasses. Because for this kind of strategy, you need a good starting capital. So with a limited budget, start with Rusted Scarab. When I planned this journey, I thought I would do Swap to Tornado Shot at the end. But when I collected all the gear I needed for Lightning Arrow and started planning what I needed for Tornado Shot, I realized that in order to get more damage than my Lightning Arrow, you need to spend a lot of currency. It's not a problem to earn it, but personally I don't see the point. Because my current build fully copes with those tasks for which I created it. Well, since I do not like min max builds, so I decided not to change anything and will continue to use lightning arrow. Maybe I'll make some more changes, but that's for later. For now, my first journey in the trial of the Ancestors League is over. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Also, I will be very grateful for your likes, subscriptions, and comments. 
And if you have any questions, please join my Discord channel. The link you will find in the description of this video. Bye everyone and see you in new videos.